anyway. At least oh on YouTube. God. Well, 187 Something people want to watch right. us. That's even scarier. Don't I tell know. me stuff like that. There's it's a reason crazy. why you do the infographics. I don't want to know. <laughs> I love watching the numbers go up. Keep clicking on the things, Ugh. people. I love watching the numbers go up. Ugh, it's frightening. All right. <laughs> That's that, too, well, yeah. Welcome to the Northern Myths Podcast. We are two sisters in fiber coming to you from separate locations because sleep deprivation. <laughs> <laughs> Two entirely different reasons. Uh, we were unable to record on Sunday. We were a little bit busy, and both of us desperately needed some sleep Sunday morning. So we're recording Monday, August, the some sort of teen number. 13th. Thank you. <laughs> we're coming to you from Winnipeg, Manitoba. One of us is in Osborne. One of us is in the suburbs. And occasionally, we even stay on track and talk about knitting, which is technically what the podcast is about. Really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's still summer. I'm still sniffling, but it is not 40 degrees above with the humidity right now, so I can almost kind of sort of breathe. It was a glorious day. I got to wear a sweater. It was amazing. You heard me on Sunday, and my breathing had cleared up by the time we got uh, Terry got me to your house. Oh, yeah, that's... Mike. And I'm on a I'm on a I am on a nasty nasty tasting inhaler. Like it leaves that lingering medicine I've yuck. Never had to take an inhaler, but I will take your word for it. I can yeah. imagine that would be just yeah. you get well i mean like the basic inhaler they're not fun none of them are fun it's, that's not the point of the things the point of the things is to open up your bronchial tube so you can breathe mm -hmm. with high heat and the smoke from the forest fires this year which have been pretty bad you have air advisory warnings you guys in the realm of too much information i've reduced lung capacity one because i was really sick in high school with a viral pneumonia for a while that did some damage Two, because I'm an ex-smoker. Everyone may now point a finger and judge me. That's fine. I understand what I did was wrong. Judge. Judge. You may judge okay. away. <laughs> I'm I done now. I had a habit before my niece was born. So I've been cigarette-free for 13 years because I quit when my sister told me she was pregnant. So Which made this a big revelation. Re re oh my goodness. Big revelation when I found uh -huh. that out. Because, yeah, I had yeah. no idea. Most people don't. So... I did damage doing that. So now when you get those people with uh, reduced lung capacity or those who have to be careful, air advisories, that's me. Yay. So if I'm, coughing, if I'm coughing on top of my allergies, I'm sorry. My bronchial tubes have taken a snot kicking over the course of my lifetime. And I can't help it because the air is just crappy. <coughs> so I sound amazing. <laughs> Whatever. It is what it is. I'm sorry, I'm so probably going to choke on my fall. scotch at some point this evening. Well, I'm having tea, not scotch, so... I gotta go buy some port. Ooh, port. I would like fancy, fancy sugary dessert wine, please. Not some starboard? No, I don't want starboard. Okay, <laughs> no. right. I'm sorry. So. I'm done with the puns for now. No, you're not. Yeah, never done. Never, never done. Never, never. Shall we discuss what's in our cup? Yeah. I mean, you already know you're drinking scotch. Yes, yeah, specifically, I have Jura scotch. J U R A. It was uh, early wedding present scotch. So. I'm not a scotch drinker. That's you, ma'am. I'm a martini lady. Martini. Look at that. Look at that pretty brown color. It, uh, it's lovely. Sort of a, I guess, honey with lightly peated flavor. If Whiskey looks like varying uh, colorations of apple cider to me. Uh, basically, yeah. Anyway, that's what I'm drinking. I'm drinking scotch. I love apple cider. Don't Celebratory drink. scotch. Five days till I get married, and I have finished objects. Uh, it's so good. I'm so excited for you. Uh, if you guys follow us on Instagram, which is uh, the Northern Nits podcast on Instagram, you will have already seen some photos. So exciting. So exciting. Uh, I am drinking. We went to the mall Ooh, uh, last time you and I recorded here. Uh, last Sunday. Yeah, and uh, the David's Tea, see the fancy little cactus tea thingy, had their summer blends on sale. So I bought 100 grams of rhubarb cream soda, which is good hot or cold. Mm. And that is what I'm drinking tonight in my ridiculously large Christmas mug. I hadn't thought of, how is it hot then? Uh... <laughs> how Fair. tea's normally hot. Well, I just didn't ice this tea. Well, we tried it iced at the place, and so I'm just like, hot. hot. Yeah. I guess it would be like rhubarb pie. Yeah. 
Okay, okay, I can work yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. That would yeah. taste pretty yeah. good. Yeah. All right, all right. So excited! I love rhubarb. I have, I have, I have a finished object right, right, right there. I know you do, and you're very excited. Do I'm you want to start with your finished object? Yeah. Okay, my dear. Start with your finished object. The shawl. The shawl is done. The shawl is done. The shawl has no needles. The shawl is done. The shawl is the done. Shawl. Ends woven in. You are so finished. It's done. So it is finished. 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 And I'm going to continue reeling back as long as my headphone cord will allow. <laughs> it's done. 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 It's about four feet across. Um, I feel like I should own up that uh, <clears throat> I didn't technically quite finish it because I, um, number one, didn't do the edging. Nope. You will notice there is no beaded edging on here. None. It's because I didn't do it. But uh, I also cheated and didn't do the last three rows of chart three. So there was a purl round, a knit round, and a purl round. Didn't do those. Because it was three something in the morning and I just wanted to bind off and be done. <laughs> so I was told the, the Snapchat went up quarter after 4 a.m. Sunday morning. It did, yeah. Yep. So uh, when I texted Sunday morning because I'd uh, been interrupted, I got some bad news about a friend. And I was up late with that. When I uh, cancelled recording Sunday morning, I didn't realize how apt it was to cancel recording Sunday morning. <laughs> Hey, it worked out so well in my favor. This... Perfect. I'm oh, glad just... to assist you any way I can. <laughs> just it looks so pretty. I'm just so happy it's done. Yeah, it's we were going to record Sunday night, but I think the exhaustion and stress of finishing it oh, wiped yeah. you out. I, uh, I was asleep just after 10. because I, I got a Fitbit also last week, so it's been tracking my sleep. I was asleep. At 10.06. And I didn't get up until 8.30. Holy, were you tired? Yeah. Right. So, it's done. Oh, the, by, this is the Even Star Shawl by Susan Pandorf out of Forever Yarn Lace Weight Lamb's Wool. Mm -hmm. And just in case you think you'll never hear about the shawl again, you're wrong, because I'm going to start my own here shortly. I also do intend one day to unpick this bind off and actually properly finish it with the last three rounds and the edging with all the beads. Because I have all the beads and I have enough yarn and I would really love to do the beautiful edging. But it had to be done for Saturday. I'm going to so bully you. It's done. About the, about the part where I get to chart three, I'm going to bully you into picking your bind off <laughs> and finishing it with finishing the edging with me when I finish mine. There. So it has as a place of honor on the back of my computer chair. Next to the Natsu scarf? Next to the Natsu scarf. <laughs> that is my very, very big finished object, and it is the most glorious thing I have ever made in my life and will remain so for a very long time. Totally fair. It's done. 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 I'm really happy, if you can't tell. Oh, just a smidge. Just a smidge. Not too much. All right. I suppose I should go with a finished object as well. In fact. But I'm um, not done a row. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk about a semi-finished thing. No, nah, it's fine. I can put it down. It's just a garter row. All right. So I made the dive, and I decided that I was only going to do the triple treat shawl I was working on the other day in the one skein. So I went ahead and I made the hat. Very hat. Nice. It looks so good as a hat. It's totally not coming through on the camera right now. Oh, no. I mean, the photos that I'm going to post on the project page show up the marls of the... Because I held the two strands together. So this is a crocheted uh, lace slouchy beanie, actually, from that uh, hat book you just reviewed. The slouchy beanie hat book. So I held the two... Uh, held the fingering weight double and crocheted the pattern. So I'm going to get some really nice photos. Um, I have a wonderful mannequin head with a wig on it, so I'm going to put the mannequin head and the wig to use. Excellent. And I'll get some photos posted. So we're going to do that. And then for fun, because I was bored and I really didn't want to pick up a big project, I finished another hat. 
Why Sorry, not? pardon the traffic noises. The window is partially open due to air conditioner. That's fair. So I have been putting this on people's heads because <laughs> I believe that hats should cover ears. I live in a province where that is an issue for me. Yes, hats should cover ears in this province. Yeah, so this is the unforgettable slouch hat with, it's technically got a flower that you can put on, but I haven't decided if I want to put the flower on or not. So I'm saying it's done unless I change my mind and feel like I need a flower on the side of my head. I don't think I do, though I am known for ridiculous hats. So there's that. So the unforgettable slouchy is done out of, oh my goodness, I want to say loops and threads. I want to say loops and threads charisma. It's either chameleon or charisma. Probably charisma. I feel like it's charisma. This is their uh, black, gray, white gradient. Which looks super good as a hat, I have to say. Looks great as a hat. And I've got two more skeins in a bit. So I might make myself matching mittens or a matching cowl or something. Nice. So uh, there's that. Probably a cowl. A cowl neck thing, because I'm more likely to wear that. Mostly because the mittens I normally wear in the winter, if they're not yours, are my white gloved ones with the grippy pads. So that I can use my cane in the winter and not have my cane run away on me. Right. Because everybody wanted to know why I wear the hats I wear. Or the gloves I wear. (sighs) Absolutely. And then the slouchy beanie is made out of the Fleeced Artist National Parks colorway. I think this is the Thousand Islands in Thunder Bay, Ontario, in Ontario. Yeah. Oh, so I made it extra slouchy because I do not have a tiny person head. I love how your camera and internet connection have decided to have terribly low quality just when you hold up the hats. Why not? <laughs> the internet doesn't like my hats. Okay, I got the. Apparently I got not. The... <laughs> so those are my two finished objects. Oh, okay. There we go. Your picture. Now I have. Moment. One, two, three new three projects to talk about, and one I started this afternoon. I also have three. Oh one's my god, I of, keep going. Yeah, one's sort of a cheat. I uh, One's sort of a cheat? I wove in the ends on my river's wrap. Oh jeez. Remember that river's wrap that I finished in like April or something? I wove uh, in the ends. Yeah, I remember I that. Have, you were doing that at Nick Club. Yes. Um... Pardon any ends you may see, they are woven in, but I have not trimmed them because I have not washed and blocked it yet. But uh, just so I have an additional thing to talk about, this is the Rivers Wrap that I did for our podcast anniversary knit along back in the spring. And so now I'm going to have this gorgeous scarf to wear in the winter. So that is the Rivers Wrap by Shannon Cook, and I did this out of Cascade 220 in five different colors that will be listed on my project page, which is linked in the show notes. There's a scary quota there for you, Diana. We are merely weeks away before I start going, hey, here's 10 designers, pick one for next year's podcast anniversary. Oh, well, such hardship. I'll have to knit something else amazing and then not leave in the ends for six months. Well, you know, as long as you have a pattern. <laughs> yep. Jeez. I have a system. It works. It's a good system. It works. All right. <laughs> I'm going to continue on with my National Parks colorway stuff. Go my, for it. Fleece, my fleece artist yarn. <laughs> I will talk about why we're starting the shawl all over again in a different pattern later. Oh, dear. It's not the pattern's fault. I'm just inordinately angry at the pattern. When I should not be, I should be really pissed at my cat. <sighs> and I believe yeah, the photo, the photo I sent of the cat with the aftermath of what she did to me. Just the, and cat the cat looking very just... What? Like, I didn't I, do anything. I have no idea what you're accusing me of, human. Clearly I didn't do anything. When she is where the shawl was before she wrecked it. The yarn is fine. She didn't play with the yarn. I lost a needle and cord, because that's what she was interested in. So rather than restarting the triple treat shawl, which while a fun pattern isn't the fastest knit for me, I, I really want to get this finished because now I've put a crud ton of effort into it. It was three quarters finished, you guys. Oh. Um, it oh. was su- it, it hurt so bad. So I'm doing another Stormy Sky Shawl pattern, which is another super big drapey lace pattern that I really love. This time I'm doing it to pattern. Shocking, I know. So it's flying because I literally had nothing as of Thursday night. And we are now Monday evening. And I've been working on other things. Goodness, this internet quality. <laughs> 
I'm sorry about our internet quality. There's nothing we can do about it. So out of our hands. We're doing the best phone. we can with what we've got. I'm on my phone, but I'm on data only because every the Wi-Fi gets a little bogged down when everybody else is home. Hmm. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. It just so. super doesn't like showing off your nits for some reason, <laughs> which Apparently I find only, hilarious and disappointing. Only, only like I'll hold it up like a like a mustache, no beard. It's a beard. Is it like it's, it now? It's a very nice beard. Anyway, it's a free pattern you can find on Ravelry if you just look up Stormy Sky Shawl. So it's not like I'm giving anything away by telling you it's a repeat of a garter strip, a lace strip, a dropped stitch strip, and you just kind of cycle. I think you start I'd like to make stitches. that one at some point. You start it through stitches and you make it till you're out of yarn. If you're really smart, like I was this time, uh, you it's on big needles. Like I'm on five millimeter needles because you're supposed to have a drapey fabric. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, most people probably have to go like six mil, no, four millimeters. They're the looser knitters than I am. I'm a really tight knitter. Um, <laughs> a really tight knitter. As we determined on Sunday. We did. So I pre-made my tassels that go on either end of the shawl. So it will be an asymmetrical shawl when I'm finished. I've already made one. The first one I made out of was my uh, really seriously annoyed grapes colorway from Ancient Art Yarns. So I'm just as excited with this stuff. I mean, it's a, a really, the National Park stuff was really heavily variegated and meant for something that showcased it. And either the Stormy Sky or the Triple Treat, which but it was originally being made out of it showcases it beautifully so i'm super happy all right i have two more projects and a start i have two more and no okay. start well you know shall i continue <laughs> sure you do one more while i get one out of here out of excavate it from its bag okay excavate it from its yeah, bag yeah i'm excavating i am at brioche for my exploration station woo Am I right? Nope, I'm wrong side up. Wrong side forward. So, I am at the brioche section, which is a Jocelyn is at home one day, watches a video tutorial, and learns brioche. So, I did not work on it at Knit Club on Sunday. <laughs> that seemed like a bad idea. <laughs> so, the next time you guys see this, I'll be done the brioche section. I don't have a ton of stuff this week. It's like my Friday is pretty just luxury. And, um, doing business unit for my schooling right now so I will probably in between take breaks and do my brioche on Friday I suspect because I am also so good together they're so pretty it's my knitted wolf luxury yarns and the die for you yarns which just yeah yeah you can see nice clean clear photos on again on the Instagram it's just coming together so nicely I'm super happy. So it is no longer a travel project because I'm at the brioche section and I have no idea what I'm doing. So I have to learn. And <laughs> so that'll stay home for a while, which I think is fair. Mm -hmm. So I can just swear when something goes wrong and not feel like I'm uh, representing poorly the adult nation. <laughs> <sighs> All right, your turn. All right. Choose my very boring project that I keep talking about. I did one more row in my sock toe on the bus. Well, you can blow through the socks now. I can, yes. You don't have this huge major deadline with the shawl sitting on you. It's great. So this is the second sock of a pair of Les Chaussettes de la Schtroumpfette, which is a vanilla sock with a cute little cable right up the back. Mm -hmm. uh, this color for the contrast toes, cuffs, and heels is curtain call from midnight cravings and the body which i will show you the completed sock is this speckly yarn uh, it's a white base with the same teal color and then a dark blue and a oh hey the mustard yellow is picking up this time uh, a little mustard yellow speckle which doesn't usually show up on camera i guess we usually have whiter light uh, but this is called cinema and wonderful there's the cute little cable right up back which has reignited my love of cables, which is wonderful. And uh, this one's currently on a lifeline because I want to make very sure that I use up all of the yarn and make socks that are the same height. Uh. So I'm going to get the other sock to this point and then do the cuff and everything will be glorious and samey. Perfect. Yep. All right. 
<laughs> Luckily, the, I'm the endless on. boring project. <laughs> and that's okay. My socks are up next as well. I'm in the middle of a heel for my Dreaming of Spring socks. I've done one, so when I'm doing, because I do mine two at a time, uh, I now currently technically have a needle speared through both of my socks so that I don't have them flopping around. <laughs> Which causes less yarn issues for me, since I obviously have two strands of yarn coming from one ball. Mm. And I have got my heel, which I do on double points. So this is my fish lips kiss heel. Here, see, there are my stitch markers telling me where I need to stop. I do the stitch lips kiss marker stitch. So I'm working on the second of two heels. I'm undecided about the heel yet. I like wearing them. I don't know if I like making them. But I have been talking with a lady on Ravelry uh, about how I do heels because of the visual uh, issue. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to write a whole bunch of notes on the project patterns and I'll write a blog post about it so that I can explain how I do socks to everybody else. Oh, that'd be a good post, yeah. And uh, hope that it sort of helps clarify things for people who might also be visually limited. Yeah, that'd be really cool. So I think that is that is up next. So I will do that because I've, I've gotten a fair number of questions about it and it doesn't occur to me that other people might be interested in what I have to say. I know, guys, I've got a knitting podcast. I understand how crazy that was just to come out of my mouth. <laughs> but there you have it. Okay. So that's with that. Uh, is it still me? Mm, I have one more thing. <gasps> Did you cast on finally? Uh, I recast on and will recast on again, which I'll talk about okay. the fiber flubs. Oh, okay. My project bag was attached to uh, one of my uh, game controllers next to my computer here. That was almost <laughs> very messy. Oh, no! Okay, where's the thing? Okay, so I have actually properly started the uh, knit-along that we're doing. Hey! Oh, <sighs> oh, dude. So this is the Exploration Station by Stephen West. You get to the end of September. I recommend hauling butt. This speckly section is Weekend Thoughts by <laughs> by I've lost the tag here somewhere. <laughs> hey, I just wound the them for tag you. for the green color. It's Weekend I Thoughts just by them. Oh, it's like Cog Yarns or something. Is it Cog or Tog and Teal? Uh, I have two from them, but okay. that particular one, Cog Yarns, yes, Cog, Cog Yarns, yarns. Okay. was uh, the uh, speckly uh, yarn there. Uh, the copper color here is from Tog and Thel, Tog yeah. and Thiel, Thiel, whatever, oh, Tog and something or other, a local dyer, they do uh, natural dyes. And They're really nice dyes. Yeah. So this I've is now dyed with marigold. Wound. I think I've wound like six cakes of it. I've never owned an ounce. I've been doing it for friends. So I'm like, mm, <laughs> fiber festival? Okay, yeah. So like all the patterns I'm taking, one of them has to be out of Tog and, tog and Tal yarn. Yeah. So yeah. I also have their, uh, their color that's dyed with copper, which is not a copper color. It is Listen, this greenish gray color. If you understand copper, then it makes complete sense. Yes, when copper oxidizes, it turns a greenish tealish color. So evident yeah. evidently, when you dye yarn with it, it becomes a greenish gray color. Mm -hmm. I also have in here uh, Unseelie by uh, Die For You. No, not Die no For idea. You. Not Die For You. Cloud9 Fiberworks. Ah, uh, Daria! Yes, sorry. Sorry about that. Yes. Cloud9 Fiberworks. So there's like, I, I somehow have a mental block because Die For You has the sheep with the rainbow socks logo, and this somehow in my head is similar to a sheep with rainbow socks. Not it's even, obviously not. not but it, it's not even close. It occupies the same space in my brain, and they're both local, and so I just get them mixed up all the time, and I'm sorry. So for love, all of your skeins have been local indie dyers. Uh, yes. And uh, I think Cog Yarns is Saskatchewan, but they're all prairies, and it's for the Across yeah. the Prairies cow. So it's Canadian. unintentional, it's unintentional, it's awesome. I looked up what unseelie means. Uh, it means uh, oh, it was like. How do you call yourself a nerd? 
I had to look at I didn't know what it meant. It, was, it meant like evil fairy or something? It's the dark court or the unseelie court or fake court is usually the court of nightmares. So that's where you get things like boggart monsters uh, and the okay. darker fetishes versus the the our seely court or unseely in the seely court it's the shiny fancy happy glittery gold elves and the unseely are the darker side or the flip of the coin how do you call it what okay that's it you're reading I, more fantasy books i I'm apparently need to read a lot more fantasy books i somehow through my fan. like first 15 years of my life fantasy binge did not come across those terms ever once i have two series for you okay right away one's only me. One's only four books long. <laughs> the oh other my. one's been going on for seven or eight years. So I'm going to say start. <laughs> Can I finish The Expanse first? No, because you're not finishing anything. Start with A Court of Rose and Thorns. Thorns okay. and Roses. Okay. Oh, I'm on my phone. <sighs> I will send you the author's name because it's on the tip of my tongue and I can't remember and I don't want to get it wrong. But it's a... It, it was a trilogy and they've got a fourth book out now which sort of closes some gaps and it's one of the few trilogies where I like the third book the best Ooh. and I normally don't say that normally I'm just as disappointed as other people in third books but the storytelling gets continues to get better so yeah I will I will send you the links for that I listened to the third one on audible I read the first one read and listened to the second one and I've only listened to the third one so like I'm quite used to the narration you might find it easier because then you can listen to the story on your way to and from work while you're knitting. <clears throat> Sorry, there was a fly there right in front of my face. Tried to go up my nose. <clears throat> That's fair. So I will send you the link for that, but they deal with uh, a version of Unseelie, and obviously it always changes depending on the author because it is it's make believe. So you get to fiddle with things and change the change the lore up, but they do a fairly good job sort of demonstrating the difference between a higher clean elf and sort of an unseelie nightmare elf, so you can start to sort of see the differences. Nice. Without technically being separate courts. I'm learning things by knitting. Things knitting has taught me. That Jocelyn reads too much. I have been I knew that already. New, uh, new Laurel K. Hamilton book that came out last week. You have no idea how little sleep I'm getting right now, because I'm listening to it instead of going to bed. Ah, oh, I see, I see. I have been reading the Laurel K. Hamilton Anita Blake series since the first came, book came out over 20 years ago. Whoa. I am a long-term voted. It is one of the few series I have stuck with. Most of the time I mean to and never do. I'm bad, you guys. Well, I tend to finish my series when I start them. It might take me forever, but I do finish them. It's because I'm always starting new series, and if the whole series isn't out, then I get distracted by something else and it never gets finished. Fair enough. It happens. It happens. So, shall we drag this back to knitting? You had one more thing. Um, I participated in, I don't know, well, you guys will know, Um, I follow, and the podcast follows, Yarn Utopia, because she's the lady who taught me to crochet granny squares last year. And I'll hold up this string that means absolutely nothing. It's just it's a chain with the first row of a stitch pattern on it. Okay, it's and a thing. It's she brown. Works with a collection of, of other ladies who are also crocheters, and they did a pattern bundle. Mm. So what you see here is the start of a cardigan, a crocheted cardigan Ooh. in versatile print. Is it that one you sent me a picture of? Yes, it is. Ooh. I don't remember the name of it right now, and it's on my computer, so I can't go look. But I will post it and have a project page listed with those. So I started it because I have the yarn at home and I needed a break from working on the heel of my sock. I needed something that was a little bit bigger. My eyes were getting tired. So I grabbed my Bernay Premium in my tweed. In this case, I think it's a chocolate tweed. Sure. I've made in this stuff before. Yes, chocolate tweed. Uh, the beauty of this one is even though I have to go buy more skeins is because it's 100% acrylic. There are no dye lots, so I don't have to worry about it being different. It that will match. does make things easier. And because it's acrylic and it's going to be a nice, fluffy, cozy, comfy, drapey cardigan, I can throw this bad boy in the washer, into the dryer. <laughs> yeah. Very nice. I love me 
washer and dryer clothes. And it also helps me work towards my hand home handmade uh, wardrobe. Oh, yes. So I picked up something like 46 patterns and a couple of online courses for $27 after taxes. Oh, wow. That's yeah. not bad at all. Oh, no, taxes. Yeah, so if you have artists and creators that you follow, keep an eye out because they do do sales and stuff if the budgets are tight for you. I just happened to see it the last well, four hours. The sale was active, flipped over, said, ha, done. There are three patterns I like. Nice. There was more than three patterns, but I stopped after the first three I found and bought a bunch of them. And then downloaded all of them because you never know. Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <sighs> That's just my take a break project, so I got something I can rest my eyeballs with. I believe that is all of our woolly workings. It is indeed. That brings us to fiber flubs. I have two. I had a bathroom break. And while my cat... It's a mess when you record. So I literally have projects all underneath the frame here. They're not all sitting in sealed bags. It's just stacks of yarn. I can leave them there. The cat will not play with the yarn. She's not even one yet, so we're quite well trained to leave mom's yarn alone. Mm -hmm. We'll carry yarn around from time to time, but usually only when we're hungry and we want me to pay attention. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we leave it alone. What we love are my knitting cords. Love the knitting cords. So I went up, went to the bathroom, came back out from the bathroom, and I was on track Thursday night to be finished the shawl that is the that is now the stormy sky shawl on track to have it finished sometime friday so i was in the home stretch people mm -hmm. getting ready for critical role when my cat decided while i was in the bathroom taking care of business that she wanted that cord oh now, I know what you're thinking. Jocelyn, even though you can't pick up stitches, if you fold it up nicely, someone would have rescued you. This is correct. I have friends who will do that for you. Here's the problem. The end that she pulled out so that she could have the cord, because remember, she's not interested in chewing on the yarn. She likes chewing on the cords and playing with the cords, was the side with the active stitch to the ball of yarn. So when she pulled it off the computer table onto the floor, the stitches started to unravel. Oh. And then we were having problems. So I disentangled it. I fixed the yarn and I hand wound it into a ball <clears throat> around the, the very tiny cake that it had become. So now I'm doing the shawl again this week. Oh, bad she kitty. Bad kitty. She was in a lot of trouble that day. Bad kitty. Also, bad human, I left a cord dangling, and I know how into cords she is, so an extra half a second thought on my part, we wouldn't have had this problem. Bad also kid. lost a knitting needle cord, so I'm down a cord. Did she I'm just run a, away I'm with it, or did she actually destroy it? She chewed through it. Oh my goodness. Yeah. She likes the chewing plastic tubes. And the cords are just smaller tubes. In her oh. Mind. She's not one yet, you guys. She's not eating my shoes. <laughs> she doesn't throw up. She doesn't have hairballs. Like, there are a lot of benefits for this cat. She's super chill. She's sleeping somewhere. I don't know where she is right now. She's a great indoor house cat. Unless you're cutting fabric. Or... You have corded knitting needles left out and about because, man, she likes to help you with those items. Oh, dear. Yeah, it's fun. Oh. I'll live. All right. And I was overdue for a fiber flub, so really. Well. It was in the universe. I have a couple. Yeah, but yours are always small. They don't feel quite nearly so dramatic. <laughs> well, I've had a few with this exploration station. Oh so, yeah, but that's I was trying really do let, let me tell you the saga. Yeah, let me tell you the saga. Mm -hmm. I was working on it at Knit Club yesterday. 
and I, my stitch count was off, and I didn't know where I was, if I was on the front side or the back side or what was going on anymore. I'm like, okay, no, you know what? I'm just gonna pull this thing off, and I'm gonna start it again later when I can watch Stephen West's tutorial. So I did. I just ripped it out because it was all of eight rows. That's and something. I started again. And so my first little starting bit went great. And then it said, pick up color A. I'm like, okay, great. I have notes on my project I because I already figured out my color rotation because it was going to work out so nicely. And then the brioche was going to be the green and the gray and it was going to be so nice. And so my notes said copper. So I picked up the copper color and finished my first wedge. And then I did the next little separate bit of color A. Yeah. And then I went to pick up color B. And it didn't seem to be right somehow in my head. And so I thought about it. And I thought about it some more. Did you get your colors mixed up? Do you remember how I said this copper color is dyed with marigold and the copper color is the greenish gray? Ah, you grabbed the wrong ball. I, uh, when I wrote copper in my notes, I meant the color that was dyed with copper, not the color that is coppery. Yeah. So yeah. this is the wrong color wedge, and I have to rip it out again. <laughs> well, you got a lot of practice making the wedges now. Yeah. And the first wedge is really quick. Yeah, it is. About the six, the and, I, like, and I don't have to do the whole cast on thing again. I can just pick up the stitches at the color yeah. change and not deal with that again. Yeah. <sighs> but now Maybe I've got this cute little swatch of this uh, marigold color. And it looks lovely. The starting of the shawl was the most difficult thing ever. It's just an I-cord garter tab start. It's not hard. <laughs> it is when you keep messing it up in the dumbest ways possible. Well, that's not the all to the yarn. That's no, just, it's just me. I was so excited to work with colors again. It was like colors and yeah. No. Uh, okay, so my other dramatic fiber flub. Oh, the one you took photos of and posted? I did. Yeah. Uh, if you follow us on Instagram, you will have seen this shawl with a bobby pin in it holding onto a dropped stitch. That is correct. I dropped a stitch in the home stretch. Let me see if I can find the place where it was. Okay. Why? Just to show you how... I just want to show off how you can't see this at all. Can you see the you dropped really stitch? Can. No, nobody can see this dropped stitch. There's a dropped stitch in there. I fixed it. You can't see it. And so it's fine. So making mistakes is fine. You just have to learn how to fix them. Yeah. Yeah. So I just I just wanted to prove a point for all those that say, "Oh, knitting lace is so hard," etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You just have to learn how to fix it, or live with your mistakes, or just oh, not, make not mistakes. thirty seconds ago you were saying an I-cord garter tab start was really difficult, but it's... that lace was easy. No, I'm not saying it's difficult. I'm saying I'm not paying enough attention when I'm doing it, and that's making it be difficult. That's fair. Lace I was paying attention to, so it wasn't difficult. But yes, you just to knit lace, you just have to learn how to fix your mistakes. That's it. Those are my fiber flubs, and that's that's quite enough. I uh, fully intend to actually properly start this exploration station now. Which is good. I'm so excited yeah. to knit with colors. I mean, this is gorgeous, but colors. If you want to get it in on some uh, giveaways and stuff. Oh, look, you guys. Oh Red yes. Me by frogging back my shawl. That pa the pattern I wrote where I messed up my own pattern. Uh huh. So here are all the little balls. We're all frogged back. We're ready to fix and be started again. But I have some other things I got to finish first before I can pick it back up again. Which is frustrating because I'd like to publish the pattern, but I don't currently have a photo for the front of the pattern. Mm. So that's not going to happen yet. <laughs> so. <sighs> Such difficulties. It's a thing. I do believe we are on to yarn on the go. Uh, our yarn did knit club in the great blocking event this weekend. Yeah. It wasn't a block party. It was a blocking party. It was good. It was the three of us. And you, so there's four of us. Yep. And Chris was there for a little bit minutes. to provide uh, moral support or something. He was sitting in the chair chatting with me. 
We were supervising. Supervising. There we go. He was providing extra supervision. Yeah. He was waiting for a muffin. That's what he probably was. Yeah, he was for. totally waiting for a muffin. That's what I thought. <laughs> He was waiting for a muffin and debating if he really wanted to go to GW, but that badly to pick up his order in the 40 degree heat. He did. He waited for the muffin and then he went to pick up his GW order in 40 degree heat. <laughs> he really wanted his stuff. That's fair. I understand. So uh, we had a good old time. Diana hosted this past month. So we all came to her. Mm -hmm. We sat around, chatted, ate muffins, drank some beverages and worked on our projects. And two of this... us, two of the four of us that made it were working on sweaters. Oh, sweaters. Oh I'm my so goodness, I can make sweaters. September. I can make sweaters. I can I'm make, can make all of the things. I can up, make so. so many things. I'm done with the shawl. I can make all of the things. The only person holding you back is yourself, my dear. I know. I'm going to knit all of the things. I remember, because I was, I'm feeling a little bit lost without a lace project now, because I've been working on this for so long. And then I That's remembered, fair. I have a lace shawl buried in the depths of my uh, UFO basket. Yep. Uh, which I'm probably going to pull out and work on because that lace pattern is a heck of a lot easier than the even star shawl. <laughs> I believe it was a Game of Thrones uh, inspired thing from a mystery knit along like four years ago. I will probably have to rip out the entire thing and start over because my gauge is going to be way different. I was I was thinking about it this afternoon for how tight I am as a knitter. My crochet is quite loose. Interesting. Where I usually have to go up needle sizes in my uh, knitting, I have to come down needle sizes in my crochet. Same hand. I'm left-handed at both tasks, but my crochet is a lot looser than my knitting, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a tight knitter. So it's weird. It just weird. It floated through my brain today while I was starting the cardigan. But yeah, I'm like you, not with the lace, but I feel like I always need to have some sort of like crochet project on the go. I like having that sort of alternative flip fiber craft wise, so it makes complete sense in my brain. I think the uh, push to finish the shawl has broken me because I'm actually so excited to finish all of my unfinished projects right now. Well, like I'm, I'm eyeballing this shawl that's here, just waiting for a cabled border, and the, there's the lace shawl, and it, I'm so excited mm. to finish things. I want to yeah, finish all the yeah. things. It feels so good to get stuff off your needles. Yeah, I want my needles back. And uh, you need to clear up your needles anyway because we've got some big events coming up shortly. Yep. So I'm going to knit right. all the things and finish all the things and it's going to be good. Okay, smoky. I'm going to say, I'm going to make a pledge on the podcast that'll break later. I sure. pledge, I pledge, <clears throat> no wait, uh, hold up your right hand and left one on your heart. Is that mm -hmm. how that works? Or left hand up and right hand on your heart? I can't give people left and right directions when I'm sitting in the car beside them. I have to think about it. I am so the wrong wait, person to ask. Go. I solemnly pledge not to start any more projects until the Manitoba Fiber Festival in just over September a month. Just over a month. In just over a month. That's not a, a, hard, that's not a I hard I solemnly pledge, pledge not to start any more projects uh, until the Fiber Festival in just over a month. There, good. there's you my pledge. And your exploration station is due uh, in threads by the 30th of September. I know. So... I would very much like to wear it to Knit City. That's totally fair. Uh, I uh, know what I'm working on this week. Mm -hmm. My mother's birthday is on Saturday, and she's in town the weekend after your wedding. No, she's on. Ta she's in town uh, the weekend of the twenty fourth. Yeah, that's, so that's the following the, weekend. Yeah, her and dad are dropping off the little one so she can get ready for school. Mm. So I uh, guess who's going to have her mom's dragon rest shawl done in like a week? Uh -huh. This chica, because it's my mom's birthday present, so I should give it to her. Yeah, you probably should. Knit faster. Listen, I was going to be done this shawl freaking this weekend. I'm currently working on the Stormy Sky shawl here. It's just out of frame of the camera. <laughs> oh. So. Uh, what's up next? Um, that brings us to so little time. You've been doing some sewing. Uh, I've actually been working on a dress to wear to your wedding. Is it going to be done in time? I've got the skirt is laid out and hemmed properly. The bodice is cut and ready to go. All of my edging is done. So theoretically, yeah, if I can sit down and get another five or six hours in this week, I will have her finished in time. Nice. I'm excited to see it. 
I saw the pattern pictures. It looks really cute. It is coming together quite nicely. I haven't had to make any modifications. It is quite cleavagey. But really, everything I own is quite cleavagey, so. Whatever. <laughs> Apparently, is what special is. occasions are a time to be cleavagey, so meh. I've made I've made some modifications because I'm making it out of a jersey knit. So it's quite a stretchy fabric because okay. I find that more comfortable in the summer. I did not put a I've not I did not put a zipper in. I also hate zippers and like pullover dresses. So I've had to make a couple of modifications to the pattern so that would work. Okay. Which I can do because I've been doing that for a very long time. So because I hate doing the zipper up the middle of the back and you're like it's just irritating. I usually put the zippers on the side. This time I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make the lining out of a somewhat stretchy fabric too, and then I can just pull it over my head. Makes perfect sense. So I'm work I'm working on that, but yeah, I had to wait for the skirt because the skirt was on the bias for the bias to hang. So right. I was working on the hem hemming earlier today. So the skirt bottom is hemmed. So my pieces are ready to be put together. Awesome! I'm excited to see it. I'm excited to be done sewing it so I can move on to finishing my craft project bags. Hmm. Yes, because craft yep. markets are coming up. They are, and I uh, like my horde painting for my Warhammer army. Do mm -hmm. it. Uh, industry line it so uh, I do one step on all the bags and then I go back to the beginning and do step two on all the bags and then I do step three on all the bags and then I... so when I'm ready to show you guys bags there's going to be like 20 of 15 or 20 of them nice so there'll be a lot but right now we're only at step four of six so I still have a couple steps to go fair enough and while some of those steps are pressing it doesn't matter it still counts <laughs> It still work when there's 15 of them. <laughs> yes. Yes, yep, yes. So that's what I've been working on for so little time. All right. Wool gathering. Ta-da! I have a non-yarn thing that I would just like to point out. Uh, in case anybody's been wondering what this little... Sorry, this little doodad hanging under my earlobe is. It is... Uh... Nobody's been wondering. No. <laughs> Well, I've got like this weird ear shape hanging under my ear. It is a stegosaurus. Let me get really You just close. wanted to show them off because they're dinosaur earrings. I yes, I got dinosaur earrings at um, Icon. Icon. So from Inspired Creations, inspired with a Y, I got the uh, the Firefly set, the Curse Your Sudden but Inevitable Betrayal set. So we've got one cute little stegosaurus on this side, and a I totally can't see on this side. And a cute little uh, Tyrannosaurus on this side. I you guys, I posted no a pattern for I'm knitted afraid. dinosaurs on her Facebook page today. Oh, it's because yes. it's dinosaurs. That's why we're looking at it. Uh, yes, dinosaurs. I like dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are cool. I will make a note in my notes that I have to link the knitted velociraptors. Because <laughs> those are so cute. They are terribly cute, and I think you need some. Uh, for uh, my wool gathering, an apology to the Patreon members, my uh, learning curve for the uh, new editing software that I'm working with is higher than initially anticipated. And I have been dealing with some health nonsense. In layman's terms, I am arranging to have surgery on my eyes to hopefully slow down the progression of my disease. So the additional testing for that and getting funding to go back to university for my master's and my PhD is between that and the learning curve, I run out of day before I run out of tasks. Mm -hmm. Sounds which is about terribly right. annoying. But I'm doing what I can, so it will go up and it will be late, and I do apologize, but you guys get the first look at the new editing software until I have it figured out. I won't be using it on the podcast, so. Exciting. Thank you, Guinea Geeks? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> One of those, it's a super big shout out and call if you were able to sort of help, and if, if you're able to help and support us on Patreon, it is so Oh, massively appreciated uh, because I just paid for airplane tickets for Vancouver. So yeah. massively appreciated uh, if we can uh, help keep the uh, back end of the podcast as net neutral as possible. It just lets us do more. Net what neutral hobbies! Woo! Was, I mean, let's be honest. We'll never get there because we buy too much yarn and we go too many places. But, <laughs> but we can dream. We can dream, and if it if it allows for for especially for people who because we struggle sometimes with audio quality and we struggle with video quality from time to time, there's ways for us to at least enhance those. Mm -hmm. 
beautiful and that's super exciting and that's really my goal with the patreon stuff so i am working on it it is in my bio i didn't know i was going to your rehearsal dinner till this weekend so things just creep up in my week and i don't know where they come from because they don't come from me <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness I just don't now i know i have to go get this mop cut tomorrow morning and then i have knit nosh so i leave the house at like eight in the morning and i'm not home till after the dinner you've got quite the day tomorrow <sighs> it is not an unusual day for me so I'll have some yarn on the go because I'll have time while I'm waiting for my hair to get cut, and I'll have time when I'm on the bus, and then I'll have knit nosh, and then I'll have before dinner, and then I'll. <laughs> oh, you got all the go tomorrow. I have all the go tomorrow. Excellent. So that's the thing. So that was that's sort of just the wool gathering is is that sort of notification, and yes, the pattern. Once I it is, if you still want it, if you want to test knit my pat my shawl pattern, send us an email. It's uh, northern knits podcast at gmail dot com. I will totally send you guys a link. Not a problem. It's actually a Google Doc at the moment. Very Because I... It lets me do everything I need to do, and I can update it relatively quickly. Add schematics, and then when I'm done, I can just put it in a PDF format. But editing and sharing it with other people is easier if it's on the Google Doc. Because not everybody has PDF viewers, or... Yeah, you know, that's true. So it's just, it's a more accessible format. So I that's why I went with it. Because if you don't have Google Docs, it's free to get. Fair enough. Adobe, or not, yeah, Adobe, not so much. If you want to be able to edit in in the items, so. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, schematics are up. We've been correcting some things as we go. So, but I'm I'm more than I'm more than welcome extra test knitters if you'd like to do it. There's a two skein size and a four skein size, and I once Dash Dash is done on the twenty seventh. That'll all I talk about for two weeks, because in one week I gotta do the two scan, and then the other week I gotta do the four scan and get them done so I can get the pattern out. So. Nice. Because I have other ones floating around in my head I'd like to start! <laughs> but we have Christmas knitting stuff decided, so I gotta get my gift knitting finished. I've already been Christmas gift crocheting and knitting, you guys. Oh. <sighs> I've started asking friends and family what they want knitted, and so far I've gotten a whole bunch of I don't knows and a few socks. I would so like everybody might just get socks. I want a dinosaur! Like okay, one dinosaur. order for a dinosaur. There's no, there's no confusion or lack of knowing in my mind. I'll never knit myself a dinosaur, but it would look really cute on my fireplace mantle, so I feel like you need to make me a knitted dinosaur to go with my Mario star, my uh, my Yoshi, my little penguin, <laughs> uh, my Nightmare Before Christmas mug. Your bigger plushy dinosaurs. My bigger plushy dinosaurs. My signage that says I was left in a bookstore unattended by adult supervision. Like, there's things that need to happen here, folks. Clearly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, that's it for Wooly One, Wooly Workings. Uh, nope. Wool Gathering. Wool Gathering. I always get Ooh. those two confused. A poster Guys, just fell off the wall and it scared the crap out of me. What? A poster fell off the wall. Oh, jeez. It's all good. It's all good. All right. <laughs> oh. Uh, events. <clears throat> events. We have uh, Year of the Sock going on. Did we ever post in August? Uh, I did, it's... last week. Oh, good! <laughs> um, yeah. So, on our Ravelry group, we are Northern Knits Podcast on Ravelry. Uh, there is a finished object thread for your finished pair of adult socks every month. So each mm-hmm. pair of finished socks will get you an entry into the end of the year grand prize thingamajig, which uh-huh. is Jocelyn's domain. Uh, True story. The entire point of this thing is to learn how to knit socks. I'm learning how to knit socks. I already knew how to knit socks, but I'm learning what I like and don't like about socks and doing new things with the socks. So that's all very exciting, and our lovely listeners and viewers and Ravelry group members are entirely showing us up. Uh, People are regularly posting two or three pairs of socks a month to our .2 socks a month. (laughs) (laughs) So keep showing us up. We love it. How was I going to know? I blew 365 days of Granny Square crochet. That's a freaking Granny Square a day. Out of the water and finished it on time. How was I going to know I was going to be so bad at a monthly task? Who 
nose. I don't know. Maybe it's the size it's of the so yarn. Nice. It just makes it take longer. I... Now, don't get me wrong. I have a size 10 lady's foot. You guys, my sock foot length is a smidge longer than my length of my hand. Which, like, if I hold it up the size of my head. I do not have a tiny sock. I have a big foot. As I should. I look ridiculous with tiny feet. I'm a tall person. <laughs> So yes, knit socks. Post in the finished objects thread. Prizes at the end of the year. You betcha. Dun dun dun. Or something. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, oh, other events. Other events. We're not running anything else. We're participating in a thing. The Across the Prairies cool. Cal. We're running the Across the Prairies Cal. We're hosting. Right. We are. We are jointly hosting the Across we the are. Prairies Cal. Do you remember who we're jointly hosting with? Pop quiz. Pop quiz. I do our show notes every week, but do I remember? <laughs> I don't know. Do you? Uh, a tale of two knitters. Yeah. Uh, cozy up knits and yeah. feathered stitches. Bingo. Hey, Got it. I remember the show notes that I do every week. <laughs> hey, so we listen. are. Oh, yes. As a segue, it's going to be a guest co-host with me next week because you're taking the day uh, after your wedding off. Mm -hmm. you uh, so the show notes will be in the description of the YouTube thing that week because I don't have time to do them anywhere else. Yeah, so next podcast is going to be uh, interesting. It'll be a bit bare bones, and I apologize for that on the link front, but you get to see someone new talk to me and with me about knitting for a podcast. And you'll probably be in the same place, too. We'll probably be here, uh, which is good because I won't be knitting after my surgeries, so... You will have to find a guest uh, host or two, mm. depending on how long I'm down, because I won't be making anything during those weeks. I'm having a cataract surgery, so. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Yep. yep. Um, yes. Oh, so, yeah, across the prairies, Cal. Uh, we're all knitting the Exploration Station by Stephen West. We uh, are. We have until the end of September. September 30th. I believe that's uh, the last day of September. I think 30, yeah. I could be wrong. The end of September. So uh, <laughs> if I find out that it is not the 30th, the correct date will be linked in the show notes. That seems appropriate. <laughs> and uh, you can enter all of our, all the four podcasts, finished object threads uh, for prizing. And yep, ours is posted now too, because I know some people have been voice. finishing. Oh, sorry. I talked right over you there. Ours, all of the links are posted for Ravelry, so you have to join the Ravelry groups of the different podcasts, and then you can enter the threads in there. Yes, and our finished object thread is up as of whenever I did the show notes last week. Friday. Uh, we have a finished object thread, and there was already an entry in there, so yay! Which is good. People are, I mean, I'd be done. I've been going slow, so you don't feel like I just sat down and finished a shawl in a week. Well, I'm properly working on it now, so go to town. It makes you grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, go to town. I'm so okay. happy to be... Th it was mostly that you got to work on all these fun things and I had to do this giant enormous lace thing, but I'm done the giant enormous lace thing, so I get to do the fun things too. You you have to remember that you chose to do the giant I, fun yes, lace thing. Yes, I know. I know, I completely wedding. did it to myself. 100% did it to myself. Absolutely no farts given on my end about that. <laughs> I know. And you shouldn't. <laughs> so... Anyway, but, but yeah, don't hold back now. Go to town. Finish it by next podcast if you want. I might, because then it counts for stash dash. Fair enough. Right, that's a thing. I, I should really want to make socks. those goals. Because we are both participating in stash dash 2018. We are. I am unofficially participating, but I am aiming for three kilometers because the shawl behind me is, uh, if it was 100% finished two pattern, would be a kilometer and a half all in its own. Uh, it is not 100% finished to pattern, so it's a kilometer and a bit. Ooh, probably a kilometer. You've still got chart three rows to finish, plus your edging. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, I, I'd be willing to give that, like, 0.2 to 0.3 of a kilometer. So I, okay. I'm guessing I've got 1.1, 1.2 kilometers. Okay. Somewhere in there. So I finished... And I also have, I think, two single socks so if i finish all my socks i think well, that's three you just use well you need to go you need it you've been talking about buying a digital scale anyway for your yarn yes 
I just go get one and even ask, and then you'll know. That is very true. I will know. Oh, yeah. yes, we're doing Stash Dash. That is a thing run by the Knit Girls. We've been talking about it. Uh, that runs over the summer, up until August 27th. Yes. Yeah, uh, you were just talking about how you were unofficially participating. I'm officially participating at 15k or more, at which, uh, if I finish the projects that are currently on the needles that I've been talking about, uh, outside of the crocheted cardigan, which is just my break pattern, uh, I will meet and beat. Crazy. So I gotta crazy add, person. Uh, just add crazy the yarn person. in for my hats. Uh, an update for what I've got up till now, and then uh, finish my mom's shawl, the Stephen West shawl, and the now Stormy Sky shawl, formerly the person. Triple Six shawl. Crazy person. I will be over 15k. And I will still have a week to spare, so I might punch out a sweater. Crazy person. And I uh, did that hairline fracture to a wrist bone this summer, too. Yeah, absolutely crazy. Crazy crazy person crazy so much crazy over there tons of crazy folks <laughs> so i'm excited i'm glad to uh have challenged myself and i'm next year i'm going to do the same level because it's just been it's been really nice to finish a bunch of stuff and get it off my needles <sighs> what other that's all the stuff we're participating in slash running right yes. that is all the stuff we're participating in slash running uh, there's a couple of uh, year-long ones that I'm participating in. Right. Uh, that you're not. One of them is the All in the Family Shawl Knit Along, which is being hosted by the Cozy Up Knits Ladies out of uh, Grand Prairie, Alberta. They Each of the sisters, they're knitting, they design knitwear as well as knit. And uh, three of the four sisters have shawls out. Well, the Jamie Shawl will be out shortly. I thought Jamie's oh, Shawl Jamie. was already out. Yeah. It was... Is it Sarah Katie... Shaw? Katie Shaw. No, Katie Shaw is out. Sarah Shaw? Katie Shaw's out. Chrissy Shaw's out. So three of the four are out. Sarah's the one we're waiting on. There we go. And I need, I've got the Katie done and the Jamie done. I need to finish the Chrissy and do the Sarah, Sarah Shaw. The reason I'm thinking of this Jamie, because Jamie's also putting out another shawl pattern. Ah. With, with all the stripes. I do like stripes. So that's got to happen. I would like, yeah. I would eventually like to knit all the sister shawls. I probably yeah. won't get to that this year, but it's on my radar gotta, as a thing to do. I got it. I'm going to start after Stash Dash because I've got the yarn for the Christie one. There's a Canadian um, knit along that the grocery girls are hosting. You get entries for a uh, Canadian designer, Canadian yarn, like a Canadian pattern, Canadian yarn gets you, you each one gets you an in, individual, like if you enter, you get an entry. But if you've got a pattern that's Canadian, you get an extra one. If you've got, you know, yarn, you get an extra one. So obviously it's it works out well. But uh, it runs till the end of September. So I'm going to put my shawl in. Ooh. Because this one is made out of, made with Midnight Cravings yarn. And there are two ladies in, Sask or in Saskatchewan that I love their yarn a lot. With and good you're... reason. Diana now understands why. Oh, colors so. are gorgeous. So I'm going to enter. the yarn feels lovely. And yeah. you're obviously a Canadian designer. I am obviously Canadian. <laughs> and it's Canadian indie dyed yarn. So I'm going to enter and get extra entries. So that's going in for the end of September. So that's my plan. And a Chrissy Shaw in September. So I've got my work cut out for me. But two patterns. And I'm averaging what? If I focus, I can do a shawl in a week. Yeah. So I'm not worried about it. A shawl every week and a half. And my socks in between. I think that's a really good goal for September. Yep. Plus whatever else I get distracted by, because that's how I work. Uh, oh, things that we're going to. Uh, mm -hmm. The Manitoba Fiber Festival, it, as I said, is uh, in just over a month, September 15th and 16th. You betcha. So we will hopefully have some swaggy type stuff. Maybe. Yeah, if we're doing that, we'll have to order that in the next week or so. Okay. We will definitely have swaggy type stuff for Knit City in Vancouver at the end of September. Which I'll we are add going that to, to my list. I will add that to my list yeah. to get done this week, but we'll have to order before you take your week off after your wedding. So if I can get everything to you by Friday. Uh, good luck. I, If you can get everything to me before three o'clock on Friday, because after that I have to deal with my mom. Oh, Lord. 
Uh, which case I'll back that up. I will get everything to you by Wednesday evening when you're doing the show notes. I'll get you all the options for swag and stuff and where we can get it from. Sweet. I can work with that. Yeah, that way you've got a day or so to look at it. Works for me. Uh, that's it for events. We have a review this week. We do. And I have the book. You do. <laughs> it is a book of four patterns and variations thereon. Called yep. The Cuffed Shawl and More by Shelley Hendricks. I'm assuming her name is pronounced Shelley. It's S H E L L E. I'm assuming it's Shelley. That's my best guess. So, this is a crochet book, which we don't do yeah. nearly often enough. No, we don't. And it was not very much money at Michael's. There's only four patterns in there. It says Canadian eleven ninety nine on the back, but I feel like it was less than that. I don't know you bought it, so Yeah, I don't remember. It says nine ninety nine US and eleven ninety nine Canadian, but I feel like it was less than that. Anyway. Neat thing about this one, it has video tutorials online. Bonus online yeah. tutorials. I did not look at them, but I assume they're useful. <laughs> Do you know what? I don't think uh, video online tutorials are always fun. Sometimes I find patterns because I'm looking at uh, people who've done video tutorials. Oh yeah, it was uh, never... like Fiber Spider? Was that it? Fiber Spider is one of the ones that we follow. There's Yarn Utopia. There's Bag a Day Crochet. Uh, I can keep going. There's more. But oh my specifically those are crochet, crochet people we follow. Uh, we follow more knitters too. <laughs> But they're always showing off different patterns and stuff. That's where I found the virus shawl pattern. That's where I found the butterfly stitch pattern. Because I just saw them. And I watched the tutorial and then went, oh, yeah. Like, I need to make this. Ooh, dropping pens. Don't mind me. Okay. So. Shall we just go through each of the four patterns? Because there's only four of them. I only liked two. I... Really only liked one, but I had notes about all of them. Oh my god. Okay, which one did you really like? Uh, the Cuffed Shawl, which was the whole point of buying the book. I liked it. It's the Cocoon Cardigan one. That's my favorite. So this is a... It is a shawl with sleeves and optional hood. Yeah. Uh, the variation that I liked the best was the one with... It was done with a vaguely stripey sort of yarn, so it made these nice, attractive vertical lines and may or may not do a hood. I would also probably do the sleeves a little bit smaller, because I like, I like when baggy things have very snug sleeves around my wrists. I liked the version with the hood. The version with the hood. There was a blue version that I think had a hood, and there's also this peach and gray one. That well, I was able to see the peach and gray one better, but I liked the consistency in the blue one. And, oh, oh, and the hood actually looks like it's a useful sized hood, too, so that's nice. I hate from when patterns are like, yeah, there's a hood, hood, and then it's like a purely decorative hood. Yeah, no, from what I was reading in the instructions, it looks like it'd be a really functional hood. I'm thinking maybe out of some alpaca. Because mm. then that'll be toasty as all get out this winter. Yeah, one of my one of my notes was yarn choices i just i don't know about some of these yarn choices in here i feel like they don't showcase the pattern to the best of its ability i don't That's know fair. uh so the second pattern which i'll just run through real quick is the ruffled shawl which i the other one i liked okay it's i would never bother making it for myself because i'm not a fan of ruffles but it's really cute not for me Someone's got a niece who will be 12 in November. That, I thought you were going to say that about this pattern. Some it's kind of a, bright, fun color with ruffles. Or, um, my also, mom, one of my uncles didn't have children till much later than my father did. So I have a cousin who is two years older than my niece. So mm. for her piano concerts and stuff. So it's got some nice implications for me. So this one's got all sorts of fun button attachments so you can wear it in various ways so that's kind of neat yep do it in a nice uh nice neutral for uh 
my cousin or yeah for my niece in a bold color because we like bold colors so or my great aunt geraldine <laughs> who would struggle with the buttons but find it amusing anyway <laughs> but you can just not use the buttons she wouldn't use the buttons <laughs> uh so the next one is the hybrid scarf i didn't like that one yeah i just this picture really doesn't show it off very well it just looks kind of weird um my favorite picture of it is the one where it is worn like a scarf at which point why don't you just make a straight scarf i don't know i didn't get it this one this one did not speak to me it just yeah no i was like I, I have a lot of scarves and shawls that I love. Not feeling that pattern. Not feeling this one. And then the last one is the button-up poncho, which I wasn't 100% on, but I think with sufficiently nice yarn, it could be very, very nice. I have four or five poncho patterns in my to-make-at-some-point list that I like better. Yeah. I don't know. This one just kind of ends up looking like a weird sweater to me with the buttons. Yeah. I feel like you would have to not have the buttons and actually just have it be a poncho with sleeves for it to be a poncho with sleeves. Because with the buttons, it just kind of looks like a... It just kind of looks like a weirdly fitting sweater. And yeah, then, no, oh, I'm this one nicely good. highlights my yarn choices comment. Just... What? Just what? Well, yeah. Now, here's, here's like a kind of caveat for it. Everybody's going to have extremely strong feelings on yarn choices and colors. That is super personal. Fair enough. I can see the creative type uh, quite liking this particular iteration of this garment. It is not me at all, at all, at all. So not me. <laughs> so, you and I do it all the time. Like I pick up colors that suit me personality-wise amazingly well and i just look at your face and your whole face is going oh my god no <laughs> <laughs> so i will never go out in public with you in that <laughs> <laughs> you can wear what you like it, my first thought of colors is like would that work on me no 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 i don't know you've been getting bolder with your clothing choices i have there are still a few shades that I cannot well, yeah, wear because I actually look ill. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got that. Like, for all of my love of strong colors, I can't wear pastel anything. I, I can't, can't do that. I can't do super light purple because then I just look sort of greenish gray in comparison. It's and... a pastel is what it is. I can't wear it either. <laughs> and yellow. I can't do large amounts of yellow. I just look weird next to yellow. Mm. I love the color yellow. It's a bright happy color and so I love accents of yellow but I can't do a large amount of yellow I look a bit better in yellow's companion orange because it's stronger but if you've got like that deep mustardy yellow I can wear that that's a easy. better yellow I can do a bit more of that yellow anyway we tangen ten tangentially ten tangented nope. tangented we, we super wandered off we off wandered mark. off we were reviewing a thing we were. We, were, we were reviewing the cuffed shawl and more. So, uh, what is your final assessment of this pattern collection? Cute. I mean, I probably, if it was for me, I probably wouldn't bother buying it. Like, I'd get more use out of the hat one that we looked at. Fair enough. But not bad. I feel like the cuffed shawl is I, the main point of this book, so. Yep. Obviously bought it for that. But I, I feel like... I feel like that poncho one has potential. I'm just not quite sure about it. I don't know. That's fair. Anyway, so we feel kind of meh. The cuff shawl is cool. We like the cuff shawl. But otherwise, the other three patterns were kind of meh. So... I finished a drop stitch section while we recorded. Nice. I love how it shows off that yarn. Uh, it's just the Stormy Sky shawl and the Triple Treat shawl patterns are so beautiful for variegated yarns like heavily variegated yarns because it's meant to showcase the yarn it's just it's beautiful They're both i really wish your camera wonderful. wasn't pixelating so much right now i listen <laughs> deal with it <laughs> anyway cuffed shawl interesting pattern other three meh that is yeah. our assessment 
that's it'll be a personal preference thing so and that is all the things yeah. that i wrote down that we had to talk about i can get rid of this note because i don't need it anymore <laughs> ah. all right let's wrap this thing up because i had to turn off the ac in this room and shut the door and it's getting quite warm not 40 degrees it doesn't count it's still approaching 80 fahrenheit oh that's warm it okay. is warm i would like to get out of this room now <laughs> That, it concludes our podcast. We don't have anything else to talk about. Next time uh, everyone sees us or hears us, it'll be me because Dan will be taking the week off and then she'll be back. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing their honeymoon later when it is better hiking time. Yep. We're going hiking so, in Scotland. So we're going to do that in April or May. But we're yeah. just, we're taking all of next week off for a staycation honeymoon. I don't know. It's staycation. a staycation. Yeah. yeah. We might go as so far as the lake. Totally fine. She'll be back the week after that, and then uh, when they go away on holidays, it'll be guest people again. So, Or just me. It'll be the Jocelyn show. <laughs> we'll make it work. I will figure something out. So I will say until next week, I'm Jocelyn. And I'm Diana. And no matter where your week takes you, don't, don't forget, forget to, to knit. knit. Don't think that was on time. It never sounds on time on my side. It was close enough. Okay. <laughs>